Praise the Lord. I want to preach out of Genesis chapter 3 tonight, the Lord being our helper. And I don't know if this will be a series. Genesis 3. I don't know if this will be a series or what, but this will be a little bit different of a sermon, uh, even for me. Um, normally, I'm, I read my text at the beginning, and we expound or exposit on the verses that we read. And I'm not getting away from that uh, totally. I feel like here lately I have a few times. But man, I feel such an urgency in this uh, day and hour we live in. I see such an attack, and I've seen it uh, for a while. I guess as I get more experience in life and I get more experience with people, I see it. And uh, I want to preach the Lord being my helper on Antichrist algorithms. Antichrist algorithms. I, I, I don't know if you know that word or that term. I'm, I believe you've heard it probably uh, before. An algorithm, this is the, the normal basic uh, definition of that word, is a set of instructions for solving a problem or accomplishing a task. One common example of an algorithm is a recipe, which consists of specific instructions for, for preparing a dish or a meal. Every computerized device uses algorithms to perform its functions. That's about as deep as I'm going to get into that because I studied it a little bit and I thought, Phew, this is beyond my uh, lack of a computer science degree, all right? I don't have one. So uh, very interesting to me, uh, but it is something um, that I am seeing um, in our devices, in our, and I'm just going to call screen time tonight. And I would, again, I, I say this, and I, I feel this way every service that I wish our whole church was here. Um, but uh, especially so tonight, I wish our whole church was here to hear this. The Bible says in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal uh, and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus, speaking these words, he said, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. So the thief, the enemy of our souls, the devil, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right? And, and, and so as I don't normally do this, but I read an article in, in preparation uh, for tonight. I paid, had to pay $4, babe for that subscription uh, for the Wall Street Journal. They'll get you every time. Uh, for a month, anyways, I made sure to cancel it right afterwards, but I'm not normally down with frivolous expenditures, even of $4. Uh, that hurt my heart when I had to put my PayPal code in there. But I tell you, uh, as I read this article, it was one that leapt out at me, and the, and the title, it was from this month, and I've heard uh, rumblings of it across uh, the internet, but the Wall Street Journal, they did uh, dozens of bot accounts, B-O-T, bot, uh, robot accounts, automated accounts on a app called TikTok. If you've never heard of it, you're not missing much, really. Uh, it is an app that is, um, it is geared towards younger people, but not really. There's people of all ages. And, and here's the thing, I don't preach against apps unless their sole um, function is sin. I don't do that, all right? But here's, here's what I, I want to talk about tonight, and I'm going to be delicate. I didn't know the young people were going to be in here um, last night and today as I prepared this, but they are in here, so I will be careful, all right? So parents and, and, uh, and, and everyone, don't get too nervous. But they found out, and TikTok is praised for its algorithm. It is so good at learning what you like to watch that it serves up videos to you that it knows from your previous habits what you already like to watch, all right? If you weren't aware of that, that's why Fox News is so big. Uh, they're not, I know they say fair and balanced. Please, I know this room is 99% one-way leaning, and I am on that side with you. But here's what I want to tell you. They, don't, they aren't fair and balanced. They pitch the news from one definite angle. Just like CNN does, they, back in the day, at least I hear this and I've read this, they used to just serve up the news. 
right? And they'd let you decide. But now all the news companies, and I see people uh, 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 gra grabbing hold here tonight. I'm not scared, all right? I'm getting sick and tired of this mess. Uh, that is division and what the media is doing to this country. Uh, but you wonder why they only have the same set of stories that inflame your passions. It's because it's an algorithm. They have learned what you'll watch and what will drive up. So they cater to one uh, uh, particular uh, po political stance. They cater to it. If you can't admit that, we're not going to get very far tonight. But they do. All right? It's just like CNN does uh, that on the other side, and then MSNBC is way down there on the far left side. Uh, if you watch it, Lord help you. All right? Uh, it, it's, it's, all, it's all catered to a certain uh, viewpoint. And that's why politi political or, or, or conservative news has went through the roof and they are so widely watched because half of the country is conservative and they aren't catered to uh, by, by a very many uh, publications at all. So all of them go to this one source. All right? It's an algorithm. They know what you like and so they serve it to you. Uh, why, why does the daily news... Uh, have attractive people on it. Well, if they put ugly people on it, uh, you'd go to another channel that reported the same news with attractive people on it. All right? It's an algorithm. They learn human behavior. Okay? That, that's why when you used to see a, a cigarette billboard, um, they didn't post uh, uh, people, uh, pictures of people's lungs. All right? They posted happy people having a good time. Uh, they, when they see a, an alcohol advertisement, it's people having a good time. It's not a car wreck down the road that took the life of an innocent family that was just having a, having a good night or a good day and some ignoramus drove uh, under the influence of alcohol. That's, they don't, why? Because they know what people, what sells, all right? And so, so these apps' job, Lord help us tonight, these apps' job is to get us, get us watching what they present. Brother Isaac and I have a kindred uh, uh, on many things, but with YouTube, we both, uh, he, he having the channel that he has and does a great job on, he understands probably way better than I do the algorithm, and he's hoping that algorithm grabs hold of his channel and just throws it in front of everybody on that trending page where, where you can add subscribers and you can disseminate your information, and I think that would be wonderful for a conservative Christian person to be made successful through that way, all right? Again, I'm not preaching against these different avenues. What I'm telling you is the devil, he came but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He understands algorithms, all right? He understands human nature. He understands what draws clicks and what draws eyes. This story from the Wall Street Journal, they made those many dozens of automated accounts that were were aged 13 to 15 years old within TikTok. That's what they told TikTok how old these automated accounts were. And these automated accounts through the powerful algorithm of TikTok was driving these minor accounts because TikTok didn't know that they were robots. It drove them uh, uh, through endless spools of content about... Uh, Lord help us, i got to be careful here tonight, about inappropriate things uh, that we all know what I'm talking about, and drugs, all right? These are minors here, and TikTok, it served one account registered as a 13-year-old, at least 569 videos about drug use, references to cocaine and meth addiction, and promotional videos for online sales of drug products and paraphernalia. This is an, an innocent app, right, that you can find on like 70% of young people's devices. It is an innocent, air quotes if you're just listening to this, an innocent app. Hundreds of similar, similar videos appeared in the fees, feeds of the journal's other minor accounts. It, it also showed, and this is a, a more uh, older 
uh, paragraph, and I'll be careful, but it showed the, uh, the teenage users more than 100 videos from accounts recommended paid sites uh, of, of that weren't that nobody should be looking at, much less young people, we'll say it that way. Uh, thousands of others were from creators who labored their con labeled their content as for adults only. What's crazy is they found out uh, that they were more pushing that kind of content than even their popular, uh, the popular front of the page, quote unquote, wholesome content. That algorithm somehow has it figured in there that, that people get addicted to looking at certain things online, and so it was pushing that content out more and more. I understand you might be thinking, Pastor, why are you preaching this tonight? Why are you talking about this? Well, for one, I think it is necessary to talk about these things, not only for the young people in, a, in the house tonight, of which there are only a few, but also for the the parents and the grandparents of young people, aunts and uncles, and, and just people that love them, uh, of young people and their self, that we need to recognize that the enemy, he came but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and he has perfected his methods, uh, but he is always updating them, huh, uh, where, where, David Wilkerson had a vision in 1970. He wrote a book about it, 1960-something, 70-something. He wrote a book about it, that there would be a, a black box in homes that would pump filth straight into homes, and you wouldn't have to go down to a, an adult store anymore, but it would come right in. And when cable happened, everybody thought his, his prophecy came true. But man, when the modem happened, that's when it really happened. When that, when that vision came forth, people are affected here. I want to tell you, people are affected every day by Antichrist algorithms, and we don't even know it. There's another app, and, and this, is just, uh, this is just to tell you how devious the devil is. It's called Snapchat. It's a popular uh, among teenagers as well. And when it first came out, there, you would take a picture and you would send it to your friend and they would look at it. And I, I, again, I know these things can be innocent in and of themselves, but the enemy will take it. And before long, it, it, it became the place because it automatically deletes your message after the person views it if you have the settings set right. It became the place for people to share inappropriate pictures of themselves, to say things in text form that they wouldn't want anybody uh, uh, telling out. And then it became a place for adults who, who were predators upon young children. Now this is because it was a place. Hey, hey, let's talk on Snapchat. They would find them on the internet and then they would go here. What is it? It's an end time algorithm. Uh, it is an algorithm meant to destroy the soul. I believe this here tonight. Now that myth is gone and people know that there are third party apps and nothing you put out on the internet is ever private. People can find it. All right. And there are even in apps that are specialized to hide things on your phone. All right, don't look at my stopwatch there. You'll know how long I've been preaching and get distracted. There are apps that will hide things, and I, I, I researched them today, even on my computer. I thought, man, when Amanda looks at my history, she's going to be like, what was he looking that up for? I'm like, I need to tell her today that I was looking it up for this. But, but there are apps that you can get on your phone that you can hide files and pictures on your phone. And we think we can make things safe safe for young people. We think as parents, oh, we're, we've got this ironed out. When Reagan gets a friend request on, on, uh, on, on, a, uh, on the switch uh, or, or whatever, it'll send right to me who it is. I know, I better know who it is and if, it, if I don't, I ask him about it. And th there are different things that we do to put safe 
uh, safeguards in for our children, but there are always ways around it. Here's what I want to say. We need to be engaged as parents. Children, you need to fight to remain pure. All right? I know you know this, but this is something I feel on my heart tonight. You need to do your best to remain pure. But parents, let me tell you, and grandparents and those of you that care for the young people in this church, we need to understand that those of us that are old enough to know the destruction that that stuff brings need to be vigilant over those that God has entrusted us over. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I want to tell you that images that you see, young men, images that you see even at a very young age, there is something about them that will be recalled to your mind even when you're my age. You have to determine in yourself, I'm going to remain pure. Adults in here, I'm telling everybody, not just the men, because from the stats I was reading today, I was floored. But we need to guard what we look at. We don't need to give our money to Hollywood when they're showing illicit images in movies. We need to guard against that antichrist filth that they pour out of Hollywood. We don't need to give them our money. We don't need to give them our time by watching it. I'm telling you tonight, we need to guard against the thief. He's here to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I tell you, you say, oh, you've got teenagers now. You're feeling it. Man, I've been a youth pastor before Reagan was born. That's all I've known as an adult Christian is trying to watch out. And I've heard parents say, oh, my kids would never do that. And that was the very kids I had in my office, not here, but in other places that I had in my office. And I was counseling them through addiction behavior. And it is things that start as a child. So I tell you, uh, young people, you don't have to go that route. You don't have to yield to those desires, that curiosity inside yourself. You can overcome it. You can rise above it. But parents and grandparents, same for you. You can rise above it. Often we we pick on young people. But I want to tell you, you can rise above it. And you can help your children and grandchildren rise above it too. Now, the, 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 we, don't, we don't need to be permissive. This is pastoral, praise the Lord. All right? We don't need to be permissive just because we want our kids to fit in. We don't. We don't. Check if you allow them any electronic devices that can get on the internet. Check them. Put in safeguards, but check them. I'm telling you, my wife has the code to my phone. She can check it at any time. You know why? Because I don't trust myself. I'm a human being. And I am capable of falling into sin just like the worst uh, person out in the gutter that you can think of. I'm a human being. So we put in accountability. We put in safeguards. For those of you that are married, that is your spouse. All right? Uh, For those of you that aren't, find someone godly that you can trust and pour into them and let them pour into you. But I'm telling you, parents, check their phones. If you don't know an app that's on their phone that somehow got on there, you Google it and you research it. Now don't tell me you don't have time for that. You don't have the ability to understand it. There's a YouTube video for everything. All right? Google it, find it, understand it, and if it's something that shouldn't be on their phone, take their stinking phone away from them. Can you imagine a phone getting between somebody in heaven? We didn't even have them 10 years ago, these smartphones that they have now, or 13 years ago. Didn't even have them. We can live without them if we have to. But we cannot live without being right with God. Lord, help us. I ain't got to my text. If they have a phone, or like in our house, you have a cell phone that you use as a home phone, make sure that it is used in the common area. 
All right? I'm not preaching these are black and white rules, but this is what I strongly suggest. Make sure it's in a common area. If they're watching things or they're befriending people, make sure you know who they're talking to. We wouldn't take our kids down to a bar and leave them there or a strip club and leave them there to make friends with the people who are pouring out of them. We don't know who they're dealing with online. And there are people out there that are wicked and they are disgusting and they will try to drag your kids' souls to hell you hear me tonight i feel an unction from the lord those parental guardian apps are great but there are ways around them and and i'm telling you little lincoln he'll he'll i'll have my phone and he'll grab it and he knows how to, how to work it already i'm like you can't even spell your name kid get off my phone right he's picking out apps i want the card game i'm like i ain't got that on there because i don't want y'all breaking my phone right I, there, there are things that we got to guard against Here, here's what i here's our text here tonight i won't read all 20 uh, three or four verses tonight. But let's start in verse number one. Now the serpent, Genesis 3, I'm sorry, Genesis 3 in verse number one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Uh, I'd make a slithering sound or that snake tongue sound if I could. I can just hear him. I wish she'd have stomped his head as hard as she could have in that moment huh? as, he, as he tries to drag her down. And she replies back to him, but verse number four, he says back to her, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now the serpent was more subtle. These antichrist algorithms, I've, I've told you how the algorithms affect us uh, on, on the different apps that we use, on the different channels that you uh, indulge in, even if you just listen to the radio, those different political talk shows, different things. There's a reason the country music station is all country because they're trying to get all the people that like country to listen to it. All right, and I don't encourage that. In fact, I discourage it. All right, but but the, here here's the, the 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 algorithm that this snake was using. You see, his algorithm was devious. He was devious. The Bible says the ser serpent was more subtle. He was stealthy. And, and that's the thing I get all the time is people come and, oh, that's not a big deal. Uh, I, I talked to somebody about that app, uh, Snap uh, Chat, the other day. And I said, I said, your kids aren't on it, are they? They said, well, yeah, they are. I said, don't you know this, this, and this about it? I was just kind of breaking it down. Like, well, no, I didn't really know it. Then why are your kids on it? Huh? It, 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 there is something, he's subtle. We've got used to it, having screens in our house. We've got used to it. And so now, oh, well, it's, it's wholesome. Again, I am not preaching. I've got more screens in this church than this church has ever seen before. Uncle Jay teases me when he comes back. He's like, man, you show a movie in every room? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to help the Sunday school teachers, Jay. He's like, well, goodness. Uh, but anyway, you know, it's, it's all, you know, I'm not preaching totally against these things, right? I don't preach against social media. I don't call it sin. You know why? Because the Bible doesn't call it sin. Right? We can't call things sin that God doesn't call sin. Right? I don't preach against cars because a car could take me down to the bar and I could get drunk. Right? I, I, don't, I don't preach against guns because I could, in my anger, take a gun and take somebody's life. Right? We don't go that far. But here's what we do. We understand that there are responsibilities in what we use as Christians. A TV can be just as much a sin to somebody as, as somebody uh, with a cell phone. Huh? It, it can be. 
And we must guard against it here tonight. I'm going to get down to and hold the row here in a second. But I want to tell you, he was appealing. He was simple to get to. And that was what his deviousness was. He was more subtle than any beast of the field. There was this, uh, a, a news report. A man got bit by two copperheads. He said, I was just walking where I normally walk. I didn't even see them. They were just there and they uh, laid a hold of my heel. And you know, that's what a serpent does. I hate snakes. All right, my kids went to prehistoric world when the Pritchetts were in. They went to prehistoric world there in Perry and I tell you just to be nice I went in there but I did not want to go in there I felt like just getting my garden hoe out and going to town in that little destroying that business I hate snakes I can't help it all right there will be no snakes in heaven all right uh, but here, here's here's the thing he was subtle he slithered around he was sneaky he was camouflaged he knew how to get to her he he was appealing he was simple to get to and that's how the enemy works in this day and hour he is simple to get to it has become more and more easy to sin it has become more and more easy in certain states now. Uh, the, uh, uh, marijuana is legal. Huh? Uh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, people hid that. Now, people don't care if you know. It doesn't matter. Uh, they, there's, there's even places that are saying, uh, why is your work drug testing? All these different things. And it's going to go, as Lord tarries, it's going to go more and more that way. It's going to become easily accessible. And they don't talk about all the lives that have been destroyed in drug use. They don't talk about all the families, the great fallout that happens from it. They're talking about this and that. I'm telling you, uh, uh, abortion in this day and age is easily accessible. And I'm praying against it. And I'm praying God will raise up righteousness in, in this day and hour and take it out of our country. Take it out of people's hearts. But I'm telling you, the, the anti Christ's algorithms are devious. They're not only devious, but they're distracting. He said, half God said. That's how the enemy works. Twists things. He'll take a little bit of truth, or a lot of truth even, and he'll poison it with a little bit of leaven that grows and takes over the truth. That's how many cults started. Uh, I'm fascinated by that, uh, that Jim Jones guy. Uh, started off as a Pentecostal minister. Huh? That fly don't want me preaching on this. Started off as a, a Pentecostal minister. Huh? Went a certain way. Went to socialism. Went to being crazy. Took them people over and killed them. It started. It started with, with, with a devious plot. It started with the seed of truth. But it, it distracted those people away from the truth. And he was able to lead them headlong into hell. Huh? See, they're distracting, they're amusing and absorbing. Huh? Half God said, did he really say that? Well, yeah, he did. He said, you, you'll not surely die. You're not going to die. Just a little bit's not going to hurt you. Just a little bit's not going to hurt you. Young people, if you have friends that talk like that to you, you shun them, you get away from them. Huh? Oh, just a little bit of a bad thing ain't going to hurt you. Run headlong away from them. God wants to protect you. Adults, I don't want to, <laughs> if you got friends like that, run away from them. If you're not strong enough to lead them to Christ, get away from them. Huh? That, there is nothing right about a little bit wrong. All right? It is something that the devil will use to distract you and to pull your soul down into hell. You see, the Antichrist algorithms, they're devious. They're appealing and simple to get to. They're distracting. They're amusing and absorbing. But then they are distancing. The Bible says after they saw themselves in the state that they were, that the eyes of both were opened. That's what the Bible says in verse number 7. And the eyes of them both were opened. Verse number 8 says, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Huh? See, it distances you. The Antichrist algorithms will distance you. It allows av avoidance and it separates you from one another. I know this is random here tonight, but this is just the way I've been praying over this and, and, and really 
and counseling some, some folks out of state and really just boring into their life. You know, the, I, I looked this up and, and I, I sourced this and proofed this as much as possible. Gaming, gaming is cited as a cause in 15% of divorce cases. Oh, this is, this is just fine. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. I had young men that I youth pastored in Broadway, at Broadway Assembly in Lorain, Ohio, that I was terrified for them when they got married. I was terrified for them because of how much they loved. Their life was only that. That was it. They, they, didn't, they worked as few hours as they could. They did school as quickly as they could so they could get to their game machine, whatever it might be. Again, I'll play games too. I'm not against it. I was born in 83. We had the first Nintendo, first Super Nintendo, PlayStation. We had it all, all right? Uh, but but here's, here's what I want to say. The, these men that have, have grown up and not grown up, and, and a lot of times it's men, most of the time it's men in these cases, uh, it results in 50% of divorce cases. In 2012, Divorce Online UK, what a website. I'm glad I don't work for that one. That would depress you, wouldn't it? It, it found that one in three divorces result from social media, uh, from social media. A more recent survey found one in seven. Why did the number go from one in three in 2012 to 20, um, 20, 1 and 7. Why did that downward trend uh, a site on, their on the divorce paperwork, social media? Social media. Why did it cite that? Uh, why did it go down? I believe because cultural expectations have changed. In 2012, when all this was new, people thought, oh, it's, it, it's not normal for you to be on social media looking at other people and other folks' lives that much. Huh? They thought it wasn't now. The longer it's been here, it's cited in less cases. I believe it is still a cause in a lot of these cases, but they don't even know it. Because as men and women got hooked on these websites and apps, they don't even know that their social media addiction is affecting their marriage. It's affecting relationships. I'm talking about antichrist algorithms. These things that pull us away from Christ. How can social media cause this? I got this from another uh, uh, divorce website. This was a legal, uh, a legal website. They specialize in this. Social media causes unrealistic expectations. And, and it says that women are more affected by percentage than men are in this case. All right, I'm not blaming everything on the ladies, okay? But one, it, it causes unrealistic expectations. It allows for jealousy and discontentment in a marriage. It, it, allow, it, it creates cheating and transparency opportunities. There is distraction involved. There is addiction that comes even to social media. I had a friend's dad who played a, a game that you got through Facebook, and I won't say what it is, but he played this game, and him and his wife, I mean, this is a man in his 60s at the time, him and his wife got in a fight at a, at a public function, and he's like, I got to get home. Uh, if I don't get home and, and water my crops, they're going to die. He wasn't talking about the, the corn in the field. He was talking about on his video game. He had to water them. And what is that doing? That is, it's silly to, uh, to a lot of us. I shouldn't assume. I'm sorry. But that, that seems silly to a lot of us. But what it comes down to is somebody got so addicted to even something stupid that they allowed it to affect their life, their real life now. See, it distances us. If we're not careful, I'm not just talking about apps now. For those of you that say, oh, I don't have a problem with my phone. That was before my time. You got a TV in your house. huh? You, you got a radio in your car. There are things, and I've caught myself doing it so many times, even in the car. I'll be listening to a sermon. One of the few times I get to spend with my family, and I'll be like, yo, 
y'all hush. I'm trying to hear this. And at some point, we can so drown ourselves and surround ourselves with things that we miss out on what God has put right in front of us. I'm telling you, I believe it's an attack of the enemy against the family. It's an attack of the enemy against the people of God. We've got to rise up and to recognize that this has no part in my life. I should not be addicted to this. I should not be watching that and say I don't have time to read my Bible, but I got three hours to watch Fox News every evening. My God, we wonder where the revival is. We wonder where the tearing in the altar is when we left the things of God. God help us. It's not only distancing us from one another, but it's distancing us from God. I can't hear God speak to me anymore. I can't hear Him speak to me anymore. Pastor, what do I do? Turn off everything and listen for Him. Open your Bible and read what He's already said to you. Don't be distanced from God. Lastly, these end time algorithms are destructive. I know I'm preaching too long lately, y'all. Forgive me. They're destructive. They are destructive. Verse 23 of that chapter. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So sad. So sad. Destroyed. That, 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 that one action, that falling to the algorithm of the serpent, that falling to the algorithm of the serpent, God saw it. He saw it. And he said, because you did this, I made this place to be holy without sin. Because you did this, I've got to remove you. I've got to remove you out. It destroyed that place of utopia that they had there. I know interspersing statistics in this is different, but I, it's probably bothering me more than any of you all. I want to, I uh, again, warn parents and grandparents and each other here today. Teens that are on social media are 50% more likely to face depression. The numbers are almost identical for adults. And here, I'm going to go into this. These are all cited studies. I don't, I don't read a conspiracy theory that somebody posts a thumbnail of and make a doctrine in my life about it. All right, I go and I read studies. It's weird, but that's what I do. All right? This is out of Science Direct, and this is, this is the Association of Screen Time and Depression. They did this study in 2011 and 2012. This is screen time. All right, this isn't just phones. This is screen time. I sit in front of a computer in my office with two huge screens for nine, at least nine hours a day. And most days, probably 11, to be honest. About six days a week. Uh, it, it's just part of both of my jobs, okay? And, and so I'm talking to myself as well. Adults 20 years and older in this study it, it, it shows that the, they resulted, it show, showed that moderate to severe depression level was associated with screen time above six hours. You wonder why depression is so prevalent in our culture? I, I, was, Lord help me. I, I was talking to somebody a while back, and I told them they were suffering with this. And I, I can relate, all right? I'm a melancholy personality. I'm right there with King David, just not as talented as he is, right? But I'm right there with him. I am prone to deep valleys. I can't help it. I'm praying through it, all right? But, but that's part of my personality. Amanda, poor Amanda has to deal with me, all right? She's like, suck it up, buttercup. Let's go, right? Uh, but, but there are times when people are dealing with things and they don't want to take hold of it. They just want to waller in it. I understand there are chemical things that go on. And sometimes, sometimes medicine is in order, all right? 
And, and people who, I, I find it so funny when preachers will preach against that kind of medicine, but will be on blood pressure medicine, all these different medicines. I'm like, listen here, fat boy, if you're going to preach that way, uh, get off your blood pressure medicine and just trust God, right? Wait for that big one to come. But anyways, it, th there, there is something that, that we need to be careful about. We need to be careful about if you struggle with depression. Studies show right here. This is cited. This is proven by science. And I believe backed by the Word of God. Right? And when we put ourselves in front, we get, we, a lot of us have jobs where we're in front of a computer monitor and we get home. And, and at this time, it was six hours. It was associated above six hours. Now, it is nothing. I told you, 11 hours a day in front of a screen. That's if I don't go home and get on my phone. 11 hours a day. What? The, uh, uh, suicide. The numbers have went through the roof. Isolation. All these things that we're facing. Why? Because of Antichrist algorithms. Antichrist algorithms. He, is, he has come to do nothing but to steal to kill and to destroy. He wants to steal your joy, your purpose for life. He wants to kill your body and destroy your soul in hell. That's why if you're suffering with depression, with fear, my Dr. Jeremy up here uh, will, would prescribe to you, turn off the screens. Get outside, right? Oh, that's what we were created to do. That's what we were created to do by God. All right? I want to help somebody tonight. And, and, and a lot of times, we just say, oh, you need to pray and read your Bible more. But a lot of times, there are a lot of habits that we have ingrained in ourselves. And we don't want to let go of those mind battles that we're having. Because if we had to let go of them, we would have to start with the bad habits that we've created in our lives. I pray, I'm not preaching some pop psychiatry gospel here tonight. This, this, I feel like the enemy has so attacked us and so tried to uh, overwhelm us with this, in this mental health area. In the last year and a half, it has shown forth mental health problems among teens since 2010. The rise in it has coincided with the increase in ownership of cell phones. In 2012, about one half of Americans owned smartphones. By 2015, 92% of teens and young adults had one. And their screen time also rose. And, and, and they are proving through these studies that those direct numbers correlated in, in, in teen depression, teen uh, mental illness has, has coincided with a cell phone. Having it in front of their face all the time. I had kids that I youth pastored. I love that I've had ministries elsewhere because I can just tell the stories about them really vaguely. I had kids that I youth pastored that were on it incessantly, sending me messages at 3 in the morning. I'm like, send me another message at 3 in the morning. See if your thumbs work next, next time I see you. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this boy likes his sleep. All right, huh? three in the morning, what? They got their notifications set on. If they get one, it breaks up. What is it? It's an addiction. We'll preach against alcohol and drug abuse. And then there's this handy dandy little addiction that is connected to us. And I know not everybody struggles with that and praise the Lord for it. But, but the enemy is devious. He is more subtle than anything we even know on this earth. Amos 3.5, it says, Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Gin means bait. All right? Where there is no bait in it for him. Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? He's saying, he's saying those birds are snared because there's bait. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to destroy souls. Still kill and destroy. And he's got an algorithm for it. He's got an algorithm for it. 1 Peter 5 8, Lord help us, says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I preached something when maybe the first year I was here as assistant pastor. Is it warfare if we don't care? 
And that ever since I really feel like the Lord gave me that that title at least, and, you know, preaching through Ephesians six and all that. But is it warfare if we don't care? There are we have been rocked to sleep. The spirit of this age, a lot of church folks. I'm not saying everybody, and there are those that are vigilant. And I I, I applaud you, and I say keep on, right? I say keep on, and even be more vigilant. Because there's a devil that's real. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. See, the enemy wants to get us focused on the Democrats across the corner. He wants to get us focused on President Biden. I'm showing my real uh, political colors here. He wants us to get focused, and that's our enemy. But that's not our enemy. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. We don't fight with guns. And Christians don't fight with guns and bombs and swords. We fight on our knees. We pray. Huh? We seek God's face. Huh? We get empowered by the Holy Ghost. And if they come and say, Jeremy, you can't preach in that name anymore, you know what I'll say? Just like Peter. I say, I can't help but preach in that name. There's no other name whereby men might be saved. Huh? I'm telling you, it might come to that in our country in my lifetime. I don't know. But here's what I, want, I do want to let you know. We need to be sober. I don't care what your age is. Graham, no offense. You're the elder, eldest here. Eldest elder here tonight. <laughs> All right? I want to tell you, you need to be careful about what you watch. Gracie. I ain't picking on you either. You're the youngest younger here tonight. But you need to be careful about what you watch. And I know your mommy and daddy do that, all right? But you need to be careful. And every single person in between. We don't need to put things in front of us that inflame our flesh. I'm telling you, I preached long enough, Stan. Thank you for your patience. Lord, I love you. God, I'm thankful for you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to preach my heart tonight. Lord, I believe you gave this to me. I really do. I don't say that flippantly. And Lord, I don't want to take your name in vain and say I, I had a word from you when I didn't. But Lord, I believe, God, that you are warning us. Lord, this day and hour that we live in, we've seen the freedoms that can be taken away in an instant. And it bothers us here in America. But Lord, I feel like a lot of church folks' freedom has been taken away long before that. They haven't been free to worship like they used to in a long time. They haven't felt freedom to witness and a boldness and empowering boldness to witness in a long time. And God, because it came about gradually, we don't even realize it. But God, I pray that these end time algorithms that will rock us to sleep, God, that we will stand strong against them. That we will fight and we will believe God, that greater, your algorithm's greater. <laughs> your algorithm's greater, Lord. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. I would that every family that is here tonight get together. Noah, if you will, go stand by your mom. Ray, go, go by Nana, Papa. And if you're not here with family, that's all right too. You just gather in by somebody. Brother Roy, will you and Brother Buzzy Come, come over here and come up there with Sister Margaret. We're the family of God. Sister Jennifer, will you scoot over there? Brother Al, would you mind just getting by Brother Buzzy? Would you mind? I'm sorry, Brother. We're, what we're going to do tonight, I know this is different. Y'all think I'm losing my mind here lately, but uh, I want us to pray for one another. Sometimes we don't know the algorithm that's at work in our lives. We don't even realize what's going on. But I believe that there's enough of the Spirit of God in this house that the family of God can come together. If you're struggling fear, if you're struggling uh, depression, if you're, if you're struggling lustful thoughts, if you're struggling against curiosities just for sin, I wonder what that would be like. I want you to bind together with that person beside you and pray one for another tonight. 
I know this is different, but let's do it. Let's bind together, church. Let's pray. This will be our altar call tonight. Lord, we love you. God, we're so grateful we get to serve you. Lord, I'm thankful. God, that though the enemy has a plot, he has an algorithm, God, you have a plan. And God, you can take us beyond and above what the enemy means for evil. God, just like in Esther's life, just like in her uncle's life, Lord, there was a plot by Haman to kill and to kill on the gallows. But Lord, you had somebody there just for that time. Tonight, in the house of God, Lord, we bind together. Lord, we pray one for another. Lord, the, the Antichrist algorithm will not destroy a soul in this house tonight. Those, God, that are being bound and oppressed tonight. Lord, I declare freedom over them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would set free. There's folks that aren't here tonight. And the only reason they're not here tonight is because the Antichrist algorithm has got a hold of them. Lord, and they feel like they can't breathe. But tonight, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. God, I plead the blood. Lord, over their life. God, will you set them free? God, will you break the chains that bind? Will you, God, I pray once and for all, take care of it, God. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, God, over our county, Lord, we don't have to worry about the Antichrist algorithm. We can watch for it. We can be wary, but we don't have to worry. Tonight, we can yield to the Almighty's algorithm. We can think on whatsoever things are pure, lovely, true of a good report. The rest of those, Lord, we can think on them, Lord. We can receive strength from them tonight. God, over the young people in our church, God, from the youngest to the eldest, God, I pray that you would minister. God, hedge them, each one. Lord, they don't have to yield to the devil's devices, but God, they can be like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They can stand even when nobody else is standing. God, you have given them an, an empowering boldness to be a witness in this day and time. They wouldn't have been born in this wicked hour, Lord, if you didn't think they could handle it. So tonight, God, we pray over each and every one of them. God, for Brother Isaac, Sister Hannah, Sister Gracie. Oh, God, would you guard them and guide them, Lord. For Reagan, Lord, Kennedy, Taylor, Lincoln, McKinley, God, would you guide them and guard them. For Noah tonight, guide them and guard them. Lord, for, for Elijah, for Jaden, for Gabe, Lord, would you guard them and guide them, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus. God, for the, the Zeech kids, Zeech's kids, Lord, help them. Guide them, guard them for those others, Lord. God, they wouldn't be in Babylon if you knew they wouldn't make it to the furnace. Oh, God, sin may abound, but Lord, I know the grace of God does much more abound. God, for those, Lord, new converts among us, guide them, guard them, Lord. Help them to know that what they decide to dwell on, Lord, is how their day will go, how their spiritual life will go. Help them to be yielded to thinking like you want them to think. God, for every daddy in this house, Lord, help us to lead our homes as you intended. For every mama in this house, Help them to lead their children <laughs> as you intended. For everyone that doesn't have any kids at home anymore, God, help them to be those adopted fathers and mothers to the kids in our church, the kids in their community. God, won't you wake us up tonight? Oh, wake us up tonight. God, is it warfare if we don't care? God, help us to recognize that we're fighting a battle. <laughs> God, 
God, tonight, Lord. Tonight, Lord. God, won't you minister? Won't you minister? God, I pray that you'll help the parents in here, grandparents in here, be creative. Give us the energy that we need to put it into our families, to lead them, to guide them as we should. God, I pray that you'll help us have a spirit of discernment. God, that we will discern things that might be a danger, even if it's not sin, for our children. God, we love you. Thank you, Lord. You're a good father that's never failed us. We can stand on your word. We can stand on your word. God, we can have hope in you tonight. We can have hope in you tonight. Lord, we have enough with just you on our side. It doesn't matter who's praying for us. With just you on our side, we can make it. It doesn't matter who's there with us, who's fighting with us. With you on our side, that's enough. We can approach these giants, Lord, even when every one of our, 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 our fellow believers are hiding in the background or hiding up on the hill, we can come with an unction from you and we can defeat any Goliath in our path. I stand on that word. I declare it to be true because it is true. Speak, Lord, a simple truth to each and every hungry heart here tonight. God, I, I pray a phrase, God, a word that will encourage and give hope to those that are losing hope tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. God, we glorify your mighty name. Church, can we give God a praise tonight? Can we give God a praise tonight? Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. You're worthy, Lord, of all the praise. You're our keeper. Hallelujah. You are our shield and our mighty deliverer, God. Oh, you are the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are dismissed. If you need to go, you can ease out the back. If you're still praying, don't stop. If you're not praying, please don't be a distraction. But let's stretch out towards God. God's speaking truth to folks right now. He's giving folks hope. Even though there's an antichrist algorithm, there's an almighty algorithm that can trumpet in our lives if we'll allow it. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.